In today's video, I want to make a quick demonstration of how dynamic linking works on Linux. Whenever you're trying to put an executable file from one machine to another, physical or virtual, having a good understanding of this topic is really helpful. So without further ado, let's get into it. If you care about linking as a topic, chances are you know at least a little bit of C. First, let's write a function that simply adds two numbers together. Then let's write a similar function in a different file. Instead of addition, it will do product. We'll make it .h to contain the interface for these two similar functions. Finally, let's finish off this project with a main.c where we call the process function we just wrote and print out a result. We'll use the input three. And of course, let's not forget our hello world and include the stdio and our interface file. So here's the input of our entire project. We can't talk about dynamic linking without some libraries. So let's make our a.c a dynamic library with the simplest compiler flags possible. Very quickly, we'll do the same thing for b.c and make a libb.so. So here they are. Now let's tackle our executable. If we try to build the main.c file, of course it will fail because it doesn't know where to find the .h. To fix that, let's tell the compiler where to find the header file with dash i. And of course, now it's complaining that it doesn't know about the symbol. Notice how this is actually a linker error, which means we have successfully compiled main.c. So let's tell the compiler about our library, libA, and where it is. We'll also change the executable name to distinguish it from others that we'll have later. As you can see, the compiler didn't complain this time. Uh, while we're at it, let's also build another executable which uses uh, library B. Now we have two libraries and two executables. If we try to run hello A now, it won't work. The error message complains that it can't find libA.so. One way to fix it is to throw our library into user lib where the default libraries are found. If we do that and try to run hello A again, it will work. Remember our input were three and A does addition. So now the result was six. When people distribute their executables, it's very common for them to also ship with a shared library and install them into a system location like this. It's a very common pattern. Okay, so here's another way to make our executables. Of course, uh, hello B still won't work because we didn't copy in the library. But now I'm going to set up a variable for hello B's execution environment, ld library path. And then the variable's value is where the dynamic library resides. If we do that, the executable will work. As expected, library B multiplies the input three. So now we have nine. So that's another way to tell the OS where the dynamic library is for a given executable. Let's run the command line to LDD and give the path to our executable as input. The output of this command tells us the dynamic library this executable uses. The dependency libA.so refers to a certain location in memory. Contrast that with the other library, which was not installed on the system. LDD tells us the dynamic library cannot be found. All right, before we move on, I'm going to remove the installed library. So with this tool LDD, we're able to learn whether a dynamic library could be resolved for a executable and which specific library is being used when our program runs. So at this point, you could argue that our executables are not that great because they simply don't work. How do we improve that? When we build these programs, we have the option to include information about its shared libraries. We can do it by adding the rpath value to the linker. Let's add rpath $origin and then make a new executable. The new hello A actually works out of the box, unlike our old one. That's because the dollar sign origin tells the operating system to look in the same directory as the program at the time of its execution. We can use the readelf command to learn this embedded information in a program. 
Here you can see that its output tells us the wrong path includes dollar sign origin. It also tells us about the shared library it's looking for. Just to prove to you, the dollar sign origin really means to look for the shared library in the same folder. Let's move our program to a new location. If I try to run it now, it'll stop working. And LDD tells us it cannot find libA.so anymore. So now I'm going to do something weird. I'm going to make a copy of libB in a new location, build slash lib, and name it libA. And of course, we can provide the lib library path for our new executable to make it work. This time the output is 9 because the program is using the copy of libB. Again, it won't work with our LD library path. It turns out we can embed multiple ROM paths for a given program. So now I'm going to make a new program, hello a-3. We'll give the dollar sign origin our path like before. In addition, we'll repeat our linker flags, but this time tell it to also look for the dynamic library one directory up in the lib folder. And this new program will find our copy of the B library without our help, unlike its predecessor. Here, LDD will tell us the dynamic library indeed is found one level up in the lib folder. Now remember, this new program will first try to look for dynamic libraries in the same location as itself. If it couldn't find anything there, it will move on to the lib folder one level up. To prove that, I'm going to copy the original A library to the same location as the program. Now the program will output 6 instead of 9 because, of course, is prioritizing the shared library in the same location. At this point, you probably get the feeling that shared library is really messy and easy to mess up. And you'd be right. To give you one last example, what happens if we provide the environment variable lib library path to our latest program, but this time we'll point it to the lib folder where the copy of B is? Well, this time the program ignored the shared library in its own location and instead picked the shared library from our environment variable. Turns out this variable is more powerful than the embedded information in our program. As the user of the program, you have the ultimate say about which shared library is to be used with this technique. And that is a very quick overview about how shared libraries work on Linux. I'll see you next time. And you'd be right.